Today I'm doing a water change on my 240 gallon African cichlid tank, and I'm going to show you how quick and easy it is to use the Cichet Ultra Zero submersible pump. Stick around to the end and I'll also show you some maintenance that I do on the tank, and I'll also have some clips of the tank that night to show you how clear the water is. You're watching the Cichlid Charmer. Let's get right into it. Today I'll be doing a complete water change using this one inch inside diameter hose in conjunction with the CC8 Ultra Zero submersible pump. This hose has some room for improvement with all these kinks in it. That's kinky. Looking for a new hose soon. If you have a 55 gallon or larger aquarium, the CC8 Ultra Zero is a must have for you. It'll save you so much time over buckets and siphon systems. It sucks water right up from the bottom at 793 gallons per hour. And I can hook up a one inch hose for my larger tanks or for my 75 gallon, the Python hose screws right onto it. Tank maintenance superhero uniform. Okay, pajamas. Coils in the hose reduce the flow rate of the pump, so I have to heat it up to get those to relax. I had to borrow this from my wife. I don't have my own blow dryer for obvious reasons. The one inch hose just slides right on. For my 75 gallon aquarium, I attached the one half inch Python hose, which screws right on. This would just be too powerful for that smaller tank. My stand does sit at 45 inches high, so I need a stepping stool to get up to the top. I'm gonna slowly submerge the Ultra Zero to about the level that I plan on draining the tank to. Remember, it pulls water directly from the bottom. Next, I'm going to take the tote that I'll be using to receive the pumped water and then to pump water back into the tank and put that in the bathtub. I'm not going to use the bathtub directly because it does have you know, chemicals and soaps in it that I don't want the hose to touch and I don't want the water to touch. Make sure that drain is open. Then I'm going to use my quick grip to attach that hose to the tote. I don't want that hose coming out and spraying water everywhere. Plug that baby in and Nice. With the pump running, now's a good time to unplug your filters and I'm gonna unplug my top wave maker. Now, you would normally unplug your heaters too, but I have a controller up at the top and I know that those heaters aren't coming on unless it gets down to 80 degrees. But if you don't have a controller, which you should have a controller, then you would want to unplug them. If the heaters are exposed and turned on, they could get very hot and shatter. While this tank is draining, I'm gonna take the lids off, but also I'm going to be watching the fish and make sure that they're not stressed out, which these guys never are. I don't know why they just get so excited for a water change, but nothing phases these guys. But it, your fish may get stressed out, and these guys could eventually too, so I'm just gonna watch them and make sure they're okay. This is a great time also to do a gravel vac. My wave makers are very efficient in pushing that detritus down to the filters, so I really rarely have any detritus anywhere except underneath decor. So I won't be doing a gravel vac, but I am going to start lifting up some of the decor and get some of that detritus pushed over towards the filters. You can just see a lot of detritus that was buried underneath there. So I'll do that with all my decor. I do this probably once a month. Your nitrate levels will indicate how often you should do a water change and how much water should be removed. I don't like my nitrates to get above 40 parts per million, so I usually do a water change about once a week. Now I'm going to lift up the Ultra Zero out of the water and unplug it, go into the bathroom and pour the water out of the tote. We'll be using this to fill back up the tank. And I'm going to put the Ultra Zero into the tub, take the other end, and bring it out to the aquarium and securely attach it to the top with my quick grip. Make sure that's nice and secure. All right, putting a little plate in here to keep some of the sand from spewing everywhere once the water starts pouring in. And now I'm going to fill up the tote with water that's about the same temperature as the tank. After I plug in the pump, it just starts pouring back into the tank. This is the time when I would put in the dechlorinator, but while I was making this video, unfortunately, I forgot to put it in. You're the devil! I will hit it later on in the video, and don't worry, everybody's fine. And now look at these guys. This is one of the reasons why I love African cichlids so much. They're not even intimidated by this. They're actually having like a play day in this current. I have three rules for water changes. The first rule is never start what you can't finish. 
Don't let this thing sit around and stress your fish out any longer than they have to be stressed or wait for an accident to happen. The second rule is always be around for at least a couple hours after a water change. What if you forget to plug in a wave maker, plug in a filter? Make sure that everybody's gonna be all right at least a couple hours after the water change. My third rule is never get distracted while doing a water change. You just might forget that you're filling up the water and over the tank it goes. Ask me how I know on that one. I told you I'd get to it. If you're doing an extensive cleaning on your tank, including a gravel vac, then it probably is a good idea to wait until midweek or so, maybe four days after the cleaning, to do your filter cleaning. You don't want to get rid of too much beneficial bacteria in your tank, or you could completely blow your nitrogen cycle. Like I said, I rarely ever vacuum the substrate in this tank, so it's no problem for me to do a, a filter cleaning on the same day although I rarely do. After I unplug the pump and remove the hose, I use this little brush that I got at Walmart to remove any biofilm or mineral deposits from the hard water that build up on the output and intake tubes. They end up looking white midweek, so I like to brush those off. Then I'll also rub my hand along the acrylic to remove any biofilm. I don't have algae, but if you have algae in your tank, you may want to do this step earlier when you start draining the water. Now that I've cleaned the inside, it's time to clean the outside. What good are all these beautiful fish if you can't even see them? I use a product called Brilliant Eyes that really helps keep the acrylic crystal clear. Always spray any cleaner away from the tank and then bring the rag up to the tank to wipe it down. It took me about 20 minutes to drain the aquarium and then about 50 to fill it back up. With everything I did during the water change and then the maintenance afterwards, I was looking at about two hours total which is great compared to what it was before I was using the Seashea Ultra Zero. And speaking of maintenance, if you have an FX6 filter, then check out this video for the right way to clean it. You've been watching The Cichlid Charmer. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like and subscribe. I'm going to leave you now with some footage of the aquarium that night after the water change. I'll see you next time.